Good morning and welcome to the DSR Daily. I'm your host for today, Riley Fessler, joined by Minna Stein. Minna, how are you? I'm okay. I'm I'm worried about Florida this morning. Um, probably will be all day. Yeah, that, that seems about right. I know your first story touches on it, so why don't we just go ahead and dive right in? All right. FEMA has warned that widespread misinformation is significantly hindering their response efforts to hurricanes, particularly as Hurricane Milton approaches Florida and after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Disinformation, dis- sorry, your little um, thingy. Disinformation is affecting morale and deterring people from seeking essential aid. Former President Trump and some Republicans have propagated claims of FEMA's biased response, prompting the agency to launch a fact-checking page. As misinformation spreads, it risks eroding trust in first responders and and complicating relief efforts, especially with the ongoing threat from Hurricane Milton. Not good. I wish that people people being Trump and other Republicans wouldn't do this because people are going to die because they think that they can't get the response that they need. They can't get the help that they need, even though they can. And so they're not going to seek it and they're going to die and it's going to be for no reason. So I wish that people would focus on help, focus on FEMA, focus on response and the truth. Um, Because I know my community back in Florida is going to be really, really affected by this hurricane. Um, And I want to make sure that my community in Florida and everybody else gets the help that they need and that they can get um, so that, you know, they can rebuild as best they can. Yeah. And the frustrating part is that obviously lives are going to be lost because of this misinformation and Trump will once again face absolutely no consequences for his actions. Despite the fact that again, this is just a completely unnecessary, unnecessary move by him. I mean, it doesn't help. It only, it literally only endangers people, but of course he doesn't really care. So it's not at all surprising. No. And it's hard because the storms get stronger and they get bigger and they're more frequent and they last longer, right? Like October hurricanes is crazy. I know that hurricane season lasts until November, but usually they fizzle out after September because it gets cold and not anymore. You know, water stays warmer longer. So there's more hurricanes and um, it's hard when not only do the people running Florida not believe that this is because of climate change, but now they're affecting the way that people seek help after a hurricane that's caused by something that the people running the state don't believe in. It feels like the people running Florida are actively rooting against the people who live there. And that's a hard thing to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, shifting focus a little bit, Hezbollah fighters have engaged in clashes with Israeli troops along the Lebanon-Israeli border. Following Israel's killing of two leaders expected to succeed the slain Hezbollah leader. Hezbollah has been launching rockets into northern Israel, including areas like Haifa, while Israel has responded with airstrikes in Lebanon, causing casualties and significant displacement. The violence has heightened fears of a broader Middle East conflict involving involving Iran and the U.S., Israel's military actions in Lebanon have killed over 2,100 people, and intense exchanges continue with efforts for a ceasefire being discussed, but no agreement yet in place, which has been the refrain for the last year on this conflict. So I would not hold my breath for a ceasefire. Nobody seems interested in it, especially not Israel, which is really the main party you kind of need to be interested in this. They Mm -hmm. seem completely... I, I say they, I should clarify the Netanyahu government has no interest in this. Um, And of course that's who's responsible. I I think the Israeli populace probably feels quite differently 
um, especially mm-hmm. after a year of conflict that's now escalated. But ultimately, if the Netanyahu government doesn't want it, it's not going to happen. <sighs> yeah. Well, moving over to another hometown of mine in Virginia, a coalition of immigrant rights groups and the League of Women Voters in Virginia has filed a federal lawsuit against Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin and the Attorney General, accusing them of a purge of voter rolls that threatens to disenfranchise legitimate voters. The lawsuit claims that Yunkin's August executive order requiring daily updates to remove ineligible voters violates federal federal laws mandating 90 day quiet period before elections, which is designed to prevent erroneous removals. The plaintiffs argue that relying on potentially inaccurate DMV data to assess voter eligibility risks unjustly canceling registrations, particularly for naturalized citizens. The lawsuit seeks to halt this removal process and restore the voter rights of those affected, citing examples of voter removal in sorry, citing examples of voters removed improperly in various jurisdictions. Yeah, not good. It would not be a good thing to show up to vote and find out that you were purged from the voter registration list because um, Republicans deemed you ineligible based on inaccurate information. So it's good to see that people are fighting um, are, are fighting these efforts to make it harder um, to vote and voter intimidation. Um, so that makes me happy, but we'll see. We'll see how this ends up. Yeah. I mean, this is like no new, this is not a new thing for Republicans getting people. The strategy to turn out less voters for Democrats is, has been in their playbook for a while through these kind of nefarious means. So it's not at all surprising, but like you said, it's great that people are trying to actually stop it and people are kind of increasingly aware of that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's one thing about Trump is that he is not at all subtle. So he kind of laid laid bare these strategies. So now people are much more aware of them than I think probably they were before. So I guess that's the silver lining uh, is, Mm -hmm. you know, people can now fight, can now fight it since they know about it. Yeah. And I saw another article that was about um, mail-in voting and how in some states they're trying to make it harder and more confusing for people to send send in their mail-in ballot, which is very reminiscent of 2020 and that election and how people tried to make it harder for people to send in their mail-in vote and made people think that their mail-in vote wouldn't count. Um, so it's important to cover these stories and make sure people know that Yes, you can vote by mail and make sure you check your voter registration. Yeah, definitely. Well, sticking with Trump and Republicans, Bob Woodward's new book, War, alleges that Donald Trump secretly sent COVID-19 testing machines to Vladimir Putin during a global shortage and has maintained contact with Putin since leaving office. The Trump campaign has vehemently denied these claims, dismissing the book as fiction. The book, based on anonymous sources, also recounts an instance where Trump asked an aide to leave the room to speak privately with Putin, suggesting that they may have spoken several times since 2021. Trump has publicly criticized Woodward, calling him demented, while the Kremlin denies any post-office communications between Trump and Putin. Uh, I mean, Bob Woodward's a, a good journalist, and he has been for quite some time, so, you know, even if we can't definitively say this is true, it certainly bears investigating. Uh, it doesn't really, it wouldn't surprise me if it was true. So it's not a particularly shocking claim to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, Trump has always kind of had a weird fixation on Putin and other dictators. So I wouldn't at all be shocked that he's been continuing to speak with them, uh, sending him COVID-19 testing machines that's a pretty weird one. Not really sure why, um, but especially during a time when they were much more scarce uh, and a hot, hot commodity. But Trump's a weird dude. So, you know, it's hard to say what the hell he was thinking uh, and what he continues to think, if yeah. at all. 
Yeah, like you said, disappointed, but not surprised. And I saw another excerpt from the book that um, said that there was a meeting about um, Afghanistan and Trump went around the table and asked everybody their opinion on what he should do. And they got to one person and she was like, oh, I'm just the note taker. Like, I know I'm not part of this. And he was like, no, if you're in this room, you speak. What's your advice? And she like <laughs> just awkwardly gave her advice, and he was like, "Oh, cool," and like kept going around the table. And it's just like, you know what? I'm gonna say I kind of like that. That's <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of fun. You know, everybody everybody should have a voice. <laughs> but but uh, I'm, I'm I guess serious. so. Like, not not exactly what you want because the problem with Trump, of course, and, and numerous people have reported this, is that he kind of adopts the opinion of the last person in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, so asking somebody who has no qualifications to talk about, uh, those issues is certainly troubling to say the and, least. And who's telling you, I don't want to give my opinion because I don't really have the qualifications to give my opinion. I just take the notes and then insisting, doubling down that they give you their opinion. I don't know. Anyways, definitely worth, definitely worth a read. Um, well, Sticking with Trump, as we as we must, Donald Trump criticized Vice President Kamala Harris's recent interview on CBS's 60 Minutes, labeling it the, quote, worst interview and claiming that she was, quote, completely inept. Harris faced tough questions about the Biden administration's border policy and her economic platform, which Trump seems eager to avoid in a similar interview he initially agreed to but later backed out of. His spokesperson denied the campaign's agreement to appear on the show, despite evidence from CBS confirming it. Additionally, Trump has declined to participate in a proposed presidential debate, while Harris suggested voters watch his rallies for insight into his views. Um, CBS 60 Minutes, I thought it was funny. A lot of people were um, like, oh my gosh, can you believe like 60 Minutes, they had the receipts. They they destroyed Trump. They, you know, because they brought up all of this evidence in place of his interview saying, um, here's all of the evidence that we did have him agree um, to this interview. And then he backed out at the last minute and people were shocked by this. And I'm like, clearly you haven't been watching 60 minutes because no, no show is more savage with receipts than 60 (laughs) minutes is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've followed the 60 minutes drama barely because frankly, it doesn't super interest me. Um, You know, just to be honest, Mm-hmm. I don't really care if he does the interview or not. I mean, I think I think it's rich when the, the, so much of the Trump camp has talked ad nauseum about how Kamala dodges media interviews and then mm-hmm. Trump does the same thing and they now have to defend it. Um, but, you know, th- that kind of, that level of hypocrisy is nothing new. But yeah, yeah I mean, Trump is a, clearly a guy who's in cognitive decline, who's not even as sharp as he was a few years ago, which is to say, which he wasn't particularly sharp then, but he at least had some kind of media savvy then, which he now doesn't seem to have at all. So yeah, of course they don't want him to do these interviews. I mean, the, under the slightest scrutiny, he completely crumbles. You know, we saw it during the debate. We've seen it during any adversarial interview he's given, which has been very few and far between. So I'm not at all surprised he'd pull out of the interview. Um, but you know, Trump's going to Trump. This is just what he always does. It's not, not at all surprising. The Harris campaign I saw made an ad, um, using footage of Trump's last, um, interview on 60 minutes where he was, where they were like, are you okay with tough questions? And he was like, no, basically said, no, I'm not okay with that. Um, and then they put that next to Harris being asked very tough questions um, during her interview, like this article said about um, the Biden administration policies and about her gun and various things like that. Um, so they put Trump saying, no, I will not answer tough questions next to her answering the tough questions. And I thought it was a clever ad. Yeah, I mean, the the contrast could not be more stark. I don't know how many I don't know how many more times people are going to have to be reminded of that. Mm-hmm. But there's still people who are undecided. Uh, amazingly, 
Uh, again, don't really know how you can be on this side at this point. I try to be sympathetic, but <laughs> it gets harder and harder because this is just kind of ridiculous at this point. Um, yeah, especially with this hurricane and the last hurricane and, you know, yeah. Trump and other Republicans being totally okay with people dying as long as it helps them win the election. Yeah. I mean, Trump has shown, you know, with the immigration bill being another example where solutions that impede his ability to get reelected are not solutions he's interested in. It's only yeah. about getting elected and then not really doing much with that mm-hmm. other than uh, solidifying his own power. So, you know, I'm preaching the choir here. Everybody knows this. But yeah. it bears repeating time and time again until the message finally sinks in with the undecided voters. Mm-hmm. Well. And if you're in Florida, I hope that you got out. We hope you got out safe and um, our thoughts are with you and your home. And uh, we hope that everybody stays safe during this hurricane. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for you guys today, but we will be back later in the day with our regularly scheduled Wednesday show. We've got the classics, Corey, Ed, and Rosa on, so it should be a fun show. And we will, of course, be back right here with the DSR Daily tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Until then, bye-bye.